It is important to invest the time to develop your faith. One of the most important parts to develop is the ability to see through the eyes of faith like a pilot who can guide their plane through the storm by seeing the radar. You can fly through the adversity by faith. Well, hello everyone. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us for this edition of the Faith Builders Program with Philip and Michelle Steele. We're so excited about what God is doing through these programs yes. as we're looking at this subject of expanding by faith yes. and doing what God has asked us to do by faith. And uh, we're here together. Uh, we always say we're better together. Praise and so God. I'm excited about what God's showing us and exciting about excited about what He's doing. Uh, not just in the ministry, but in the whole body of Christ throughout yeah. the earth and, and our part in it. It's exciting uh, to see what God is doing. We were talking before the program began on how uh, sometimes I, um, and, and if you knew me, you would understand, I kind of wear my emotions on my sleeve anyway. <laughs> and I kind of get uh, uh, overcome sometimes when we're here and we're, we're doing what God has called us to do because, you know, and you don't focus on it but God brings back to your remembrance all the times that the enemy and people said you can't. Yes. And it'll never occur. And you know, you and I have always been very aware uh, that what God has asked us to do, we can't do it in ourselves. We can't do it alone. And we've been very aware of that. But we go back all of those years ago to every voice that said you can't, and that's what you're believing God for. That's impossible. I, I remember when, when the Lord really began to deal with us to have a television program and deal with you to have a television program. There were people that made light of it and, and you know, just acted like it wasn't a big thing. It was our heart. It was everything to us. Yes. And uh, here we are now, all these years later, doing what God said to do. And, and at... Uh, uh, just a few moments ago, I was just almost overcome because here we are doing what God said for us to do and ask us to do, and we've done it all by faith. By faith. Done we've it all by faith. We stepped out on a word from the Lord, and we followed through. I remember when the opportunity came to have this television broadcast, I, my husband asked me, he said, do you think we should do this? And I said, I don't see that we have an option. It's what God is instructing us to do. And what we're talking about in this discussion of by faith is learning how to let the word of God yeah. create in us an inner image that we can begin to walk by that image that the word is developing. I remember um, when I first began to understand how faith puts an image, a picture on the inside of your heart. Um, one of the first things that I would see is that if you are believing God to be healed, and until you see yourself healed, keep building the image, yeah. keep putting your eyes on the word, putting the word in your heart and in your mouth until you reach a place where you can see that fullness. And we experienced that in our finances yeah. because we were taking scriptures and we were going over specific verses yeah. every day, putting it in our heart, putting it in our eyes, saying it out loud. And then the one day we hit that place where we knew we were full of faith concerning that we were able to by faith increase and expand and enter into the things that God had for and, us. And what we did all of those years before, that would have been uh, probably 20 years before God asked us, God spoke to us. I remember very clearly, God spoke to Michelle and I and said, I want you out of debt. And he said very plainly, he said, you cannot do what I'm asking you to do if you're burdened by this debt. Well, at that time, we were exactly, this is not a roundabout figure, we were exactly, I looked at it just not too long ago because we still have the, the records, $210,000 in debt. We were $210,000 in debt. And the Lord said, I want you to be debt free. I want you debt free. Yes. Now he gave us some physical steps to take, but here's the point. We did the same thing that we did in the beginning. We took the word of God and began to apply it to that debt load. 
God would give us scriptures, we would see scriptures, and we would apply it to those scriptures. Now, I will say I don't know how it happened. I do know how it happened. I don't know by all the faith. steps. By faith. <laughs> it happened by I, faith. <laughs> I, I don't know all the steps. I don't know how God did everything that he did. Yes. But I do know that nine months from the time he told us to come out of debt, Nine months from that time, we owed no man anything. We were debt free. Yeah, it was steps though. There were steps, steps that we took by faith that God led us for in the natural, but he led us in our heart with steps to take. And then there was a portion of it that came in supernaturally that supernaturally. God spoke to a certain person and that person brought a, a lump sum and it was what paid off that debt, but it was steps of steps faith. Steps of faith. And we were determined, we didn't care how long it took. We weren't hoping for nine months. We, I think on my vision prayer that I had put out, I had put, I wanted it by um, 2002, which right. was the year that we came out of debt. So <coughs> uh, it was steps and it was by faith that we took those steps and the faith came first of all, by us being in the word and the word preparing our heart to receive uh, the instruction of God, some instructions that didn't seem reasonable to the mind. And that's what we're going to talk about today in learning how to walk by faith. The just shall live by faith and that we walk by faith and not by sight. We want to learn how the word shows us to apply that practically to our life. Well, and, and the scriptures that, that we've been using are Romans uh, chapter one, verse 17, where it says, for therein in the word is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. According as it is written, the just shall live by faith or conduct their manner of life by faith. Yes. Then 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. One translation says we walk by faith, never by sight, never by what appears. Now notice we walk, we live, we conduct our manner of life by faith. Yes. Now uh, the word by is a preposition. All right. Uh, a preposition is the identifying agent performing an action. It identifies the agent performing an action. Yeah. Now, if I'm giving you an English lesson, you'll forgive me. My father-in-law was an English professor and my wife is a, uh, a English tutor for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but a, a, a preposition does something. It links nouns and pronouns and phrases to other words in a sentence. All right. How do I, how do I get to this place through preposition that door? Yes. By that road. Yes. It, it links phrases to other words in a sentence. So the word or phrase that the preposition introduces is called the what? The object of the, the preposition. preposition. Yes. The believer walks by, by faith. faith. So the object of the preposition by is faith. Yes. The object of the preposition then is faith. In order to walk or live by faith, seeing the unseen is a prerequisite. Yes. You have to. You have to see the unseen. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, we see something concerning Abraham. And it says, by faith, remember now, by faith, preposition by is describing the agent performing the action. Yes. By faith. He did something, but he did it through the agency of faith. Yes. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after, after he was called, yes. receive, notice, after he was called, he should receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. We could say it this way, not seeing the land yes. that he was going to. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Now notice this, Abraham went 
not troubling his mind as to where he was going. Yes. Not troubling his mind. Troubling your mind is simply this, trying to see with the natural what has been promised by faith. Yes. And how many times people get hung up and that location in their, their faith walk because they haven't developed to be able to, to recognize the difference between what is seen in a temporary circumstance and what is seen as an eternal truth and how to continue moving forward by what you see in the eternal truth of God's word or what is being brought to you as a result of, of a promise that God has made through his covenant to you, when we walk by faith, we're not walking mysteriously or in the dark or unknowingly. And the reason that he was able to not trouble his mind is because it was based on the word and not based on what he could see. Well, you know, very often I hear people say, and uh, people are very well-meaning about it, but they'll say, well, pastor, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Yes. Well, you can't. No. <laughs> you, you, you can't wrap your mind around something that the natural mind can't conceive of. When we were talking about coming out of debt, and one instance stands out to me, a step that the Lord told us to take. We had, uh, we had been uh, in a situation with a vehicle, and this is many years ago now. We'd been in a situation with a vehicle, and we were upside down in the vehicle. Yes. The, we, we, we owed more for the vehicle than it was worth. And the Lord gave us a step. He said, let that go back and believe me for the top blue book value, blue book value at auction, auction yeah. for that car. And we did. We believed for the top blue book value, which was $10,000. That's what it received. Yes. We owed $13,000 on the car. So that left $3,000, obviously, real quick fifth grade math lesson. That, that's probably second grade nowadays, isn't it? But in any event... <laughs> We owed $3,000 on it, and uh, the Lord told me to call the company that had held that $3,000 and ask them for a settlement. The lady answered the phone, and I gave her the information, and I said, I would like to settle this account. She said, how much would you like to settle it for? The Lord told me to ask them to settle it for a quarter of what we owed. Well, we owed $3,000. So the Lord asked me to ask her to settle for a quarter. I did. And she, first of all, she said, well, I don't think that we can do that. But then she began to take the information and she said, oh, you're a pastor? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she said, okay, hold on a minute. She put me on hold and she came back on the line about two minutes later and she said, Pastor Steele? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, she began to tell me that she was a believer and believed in the favor of God and believed that, that God wanted to do great things. I didn't know where this was coming from. All right, why is this woman testifying to me over the phone? Well, then she said, I believe we can help you. And I gave the phone to my wife, and they made the, the deal and, and broke it down into three payments. Yes. And we paid that off. Here's my point. I took a step by faith that I didn't understand. Yes. But God did something. He not only made a way, He put me in contact with somebody that could help me yes. make a way. Yes. A believer, faith did that. That wasn't coincidence. Abraham went looking for a land, the Bible says, whose builder and maker was God. Praise God. God had done this. And when God said go, Abraham just went. He didn't trouble his mind about where he was going. Yes. We're going to do what God said. God had promised, if you look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 7 and 8, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham, or unto Abram at this time, and said, Under your seed I'll give this land. And he built an altar to the Lord which appeared to him, and he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, uh, having Bethel on the west, and Haon on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Now notice something. God had promised Abraham that the land he was in would belong to him and his seed, yet there was no document. Yes. There was no paper that said this land belongs to you. Nothing in yes. the natural. There was no title deed 
other than faith. Other than the Word of God. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance, the word is title deed, yes. of the thing hoped for. Now here's a question. You can expound on this. If a person has a title to a car, they have the car. Yes. Rather or not, the car's parked in the driveway or not. If you have the title to something, you have more ownership of that thing than the person who may be driving it. That's right. Because you have proof of ownership. Yes. You have a, a legal authority granted to you by that title that enables you to take a position of confidence because I own this because it says I own it. And, and people can dispute you, well, so-and-so's driving it. I don't care who's driving it. I own it. And, and you can exercise that authority to get it back in your possession if it's not in your possession. And that's what happens with the word. When we look at the word as a legal document of authority that God said in his word, I, by his stripes, I am healed. And the circumstance might say, well, there are symptoms in your body. There's, we're not denying the symptoms. We're not saying, I don't have symptoms. I don't have symptoms. I don't have symptoms. We're taking the legal document of the authority that gives me title right. deed to the healing. The healing is mine by title deed. Right. And I have a document sealed in the blood of Jesus saying that this Amen. document is a legal binding agreement between me and God, the blood covenant. And that blood covenant authority says... Healing belongs to me through the stripes Jesus bore on his back. By his stripes, I'm healed. It's an, it's an exercising of authority to drive that sickness out of the body, not pretend it's not there. We're not walking around saying, I don't have it, I don't have it, I don't have it. I'm, I'm exercising the authority to bring into possession. That's what it says in, in 1 Corinthians, I believe yeah. it is, uh, chapter 1 when it says... Um, or it's chapter two, it, uh, 127. It says, uh, we, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He's chosen things that are not to bring to, to, bring to not things, that are. things yeah. that are, to nullify the things that are. So if, if what's in your life is sickness, you can nullify it. Yeah. You can bring it down to nothing by calling into existence what the covenant, the title deed says belongs to you yes. and you can call it into manifestation. Well, the important thing to see and for everyone to see is this, that what we've been promised by faith is more real than anything you could ever see. Yes. Something that the Lord has dealt with me over the years about is this, what I have been promised is more real than what I can see. For instance, in Hebrews eleven three. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen did not come from the things which do appear. It does not say that God created the universe out of things that did not exist. It says he, he created the universe out of things that were not seen. seen. They existed. They just were not seen. If you and I had been there, we would not have been able to see what God constructed the universe out of, but it existed. It just existed in the realm of faith. Yes. Everything that you have need of already exists. Ooh, glory. It just exists in the realm of faith. Yes. Faith is the access point. If you go to a department store to buy a suit or buy a dress or buy any item and you pick that suit up off the rack or you to take that dress off the rack, it's not yours until you complete the transaction. Yes. It's there, it's, it's available, but you have a transaction to complete. Faith is the transaction point. Praise God. When you enter into faith, that's when you take ownership of something. So when you say, I have it by faith, you're not saying I'm waiting to see it, or I'm hoping that it comes. When you say, I have it by faith, that's more real than holding it in your hands because you have it. Holding it in my hands is simply the manifestation of what I already possess. Yes. That's all it is. 
I'm not more healed when I feel healed. I'm not more healed when I feel it. That's right. That's right. I am healed the moment I take it by faith. That's right. The symptoms may subside. They may not subside. It doesn't change the fact that I'm healed. Amen. Praise God. The process of faith is the process that God has designed for you and I to live by. The just shall live by faith. But what we've been talking about in this program, it works for us because we have entered by faith into a relationship with Jesus Christ. The most important decision you'll ever make is to enter into that relationship. And what that means is that you believe and you speak. You believe that Jesus died on the cross, that God raised him from the dead. And you declare out of your mouth, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I want to give you that opportunity today because this is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. And it will change your life forever. And so if you are watching me today and you would say, Michelle, I don't know this victory that you're talking about, how to operate, know Jesus and he'll lead you into all of it. Pray with me right now. Pray with me this prayer. Thank you, Father. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross, that you poured out your blood to cleanse me from sin. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And today I ask you, be the Lord of my life. I ask you to save me, cleanse me, forgive me. And I thank you for answering that prayer. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, if you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you are saved. And that salvation, again, it's not something that necessarily you will feel, but you'll know. You'll know, I have received Jesus today because I did what the word said. And understanding how to walk in this life of great faith is so easy. It's not hard. It might be different to you because you've been walking by what you could see, but it's not hard if you'll take the Word of God and let the Word of God build an image of faith in your heart. If you're believing for your healing, build an image of faith in your heart. If you're believing for the salvation of your loved ones, let the Word of God produce a faith in your heart that you can reach out and and receive what God has provided in his covenant. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you took the time to tune in with us today to our program. And we want you to be in, uh, encouraged even more by the videos and the resources that we have available on our website. So please visit buildfaith.net. If you're in the city of Little Rock, Pastor Philip and I encourage you to come out and be in our church services. We also have those services live streamed. If you're not here in Little Rock, Arkansas, you can watch from anywhere uh, that you are. Are and you can tune in and we will bring a word that will strengthen you Amen. and hopefully give you the light to walk by. And we're so grateful for the opportunity to, to be in your life today through this program. And we look for many more opportunities. And I want to encourage you to build your faith and to frame your world by the word of God. God bless you. We'll see you next time. It is God's will that we as believers experience expansion, multiplication, and increase in every area of our lives. But these things must be accessed by faith. Throughout God's Word, we see that faith is the key that unlocks the door to the increase in our lives. In this faith-building series, Pastor Philip Still will help you see from the Word of God how to use your faith like a tool to access the expansion God desires that you walk in. To receive Expansion by Faith as our gift to you, simply call 1-800-516-8082 or online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 452, DeSoto, Kansas 66018. I want to take a moment and just encourage you, my partners, as to the 
of the abounding goodness of God that he wants you to lay hold of as a result of your partnering with him in this ministry. You know, when we use the scripture very often from Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I apply that one personally. My God shall supply all my need. But in context, this verse is a partnership verse. This is Paul telling his partners because of their participation with him financially in preaching the gospel. It says they communicated with him once and again. They communicated, meaning they were financially sowing into his ministry continually. And he, as a result, is saying, my God shall supply all your need. You know, having uh, walked through in ministry for a number of years, I have seen the value and the importance of having faithful partners and what a, a, a heart has um, just been developed in me for the people who partner with me. I pray for you. You know, just praying for you every day has helped me develop in my heart for you. But the, the appreciation for you being a part is something that causes me to want to see you increase. It causes me to want to see you get a recompense and to receive back into your life because you're sowing into this ministry. And that's what Paul was saying. He, he called it, they were concerning giving and receiving. And not only were they giving to him, but he wanted them to receive as well. He said, I desire that you have fruit that abounds to your account. And I just want to encourage you, God, his system is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And when you sow into the preaching of the gospel, you're sowing spiritual things. You're sowing money, but you're sowing it for a spiritual motive. You're sowing it to see the gospel preached. And that light is going to shine upon your path. That harvest is going to come back to you as a harvest of light. It's going to come back to you as a harvest of revelation. It's going to come back to you as wisdom. It's going to come back to you in blessing and finances. I want you to expect it and I want you to release your faith for it. And so I just bless you today and say thank you so much for being a faith builder and for partnering with us in this ministry. God bless you. Thank you for being a faith builder. Together we are spreading God's word across the world through television, print, and the internet. In addition, your giving will produce a harvest in your own life. You can sow online, by mail, or by phone. Thank you for your partnership. Faith is a law. It supersedes the laws of sickness, disease, and death. When faith is implemented, it changes those laws. He needs you to be expecting his favor to manifest in ways you've never seen. Why? Because faith gives substance to things expected or hoped for. And you need to be expecting for things to change. Expecting for the situation to come to an end, expecting for a turnaround. We invite you and your family to join us at Faith Builders every Sunday and Wednesday in Little Rock. For more information, go to buildfaith.net.